Hey there folks, uh, Bryce Holdaway here, Ben Kingsley, we are the hosts of The Property Couch and we are doing this little Facebook Live to answer a few of the Q&As that we seem to get a lot of Beautiful. when we have our podcast uh, every week, don't we Ben? So, we do. Uh, welcome mate. Thank you. So folks, uh, we've got some questions that we're going to read out, so thank you for those. And the first one is from Kate. Ben? Yes. Now, the good thing about this one is Kate's actually uh, read our book, our Make Money Simple Again Yeah, book. I've got one here. Got one there. Yeah. Um, but she has also highlighted something that uh, is a very, very good pickup that we want mm -hmm. to clear up here today. So yes. let's, uh, let's read through this. Uh, Hi, Bryce. I met you briefly at a Gaps lunch. Hey, I'm <laughs> dinner with Joe Whitten a few years back. Um, for those of you who don't know, Gaps is, it's a gut healing mm -hmm. uh, protocol. I believe they're doing some research on the relationship between the gut and um, autism. They mm, are, Ben. Yeah. So uh, it's good to see that it's catching up with what we've been doing for the last three years, oh, which is really nice. how it comes out. Um, I'm reading your book because we've just decided to buy the house over the back fence and thought I'd do a bit of financial self-help. Love it. Organised. Get that deposit ready. <laughs> I've always paid credit card off on the due date and never been charged interest except for a couple of times where I got caught that purchase was considered a cash advance, betting, lotto, that sort of stuff. Yeah. Um, I have an up to 55 day interest free MasterCard. Uh, your book mentions to look for a full 55 day uh, card and that is yes. the very important um, yes. key here. I've done a quick internet search and can only find up to 55 days and some with 62 days. I may have mis misunderstood what you meant by a full 55 day. If not, are you able to lead me in the right direction to find an institution that offers the full interest free period? Thank you, enjoy your Podcast, Kate. So a couple of points there. Firstly, Kate, I'll, I'll, go, I'll go for the low-hanging fruit. Bryce, do you know how many people who don't realise that you can auto-sweep your credit card so you don't even have to remember mm -hmm. to actually pay it off? It's automatically paid from your primary account once you've set up your banking section of the Money Smart system. So that I, we had clients in just the other week, right? And they said, I love it. And I go, well, so... Let me do it. I'd never pay interest on credit. Well, what do you do? I just put a note in the diary. I know it's there. And I remember I said, it. I remember it. And I said, never. It's it's nothing well, telling. maybe yeah. in the last five years there was once I missed it. The day you miss. Hope, hope my battery doesn't run out of my phone and I miss, yeah. miss my calendar that day. So all good banks have an auto-sweep yep. feature, which basically means at the end of the statement period when the payment is due, i.e. usually the 55 days, <laughs> It will auto sweep that. So you, up to fifty five. Yes, yes. Well, I'll, I'll get to that in a minute. <laughs> in terms of the sentence that I wrote inside the book, because that is where I did make the mistake. How many times can you write up to fifty five in the book? So my error in the book was I've written up to twice in or three times in two sentences. I'm like, tis, tis. I need another word. So the full fifty five. Because what I was trying to explain to people is there are some credit cards which are inferior. To the up to 55 day period so they have a 32 day period or they have a 42 day period not the full 55 day period so full. everyone the full 55 everyone day. assumed that that meant that they yep. would get 55 days on all the purchases they do i am sorry that you have been that my sentence was misconstrued so the reality i mean Good that Kate found a 62-day one because most people who have contacted me, the thousands of people who have bought the book and read it, have asked that question. So we will update that in the, the next version of the book to just explain to people, yeah, it's really 55 days. I, I don't know of the 62-day uh, card. And when I say the full 55, I just meant not the 42 the, or the 33. The full version. The full version of that. And it, may, it just means that on the first day of the next statement date, mm -hmm. you don't have to pay that until 55 days. But if you spent in the middle of the month or at the end of the month, you're not getting that full 55 days. So that's where people were like, oh, wait a minute, does it automatically roll over? No, it's just 55 days. So my apologies for that sentence. Uh, I should have just kept with up to 55 days rather than saying the full 55 days. Now, Kate, um, it was a pleasure to meet you. Thanks for sending it through. Thanks for um, reading the book. Further on, you said that uh, you haven't had an opportunity to listen to the Property Couch podcast because 
uh, the background noise uh, was a little bit of an issue for you. We probably had maybe three or four people mm. over the journey, Ben. We're up to sort of 240 episodes, yep. you know, 4.6 million downloads. Maybe a handful of people have said the same thing. Um, but for the majority of people, there's no challenge with the um, with the audio. Oh, yeah. So which would suggest there may be something on your end, not, not 100%, but yep. there, it would suggest that um, just through sheer weight of numbers that there may be something on your end. So, so how do you test that? A couple of ideas to test mm. it. First one, whatever app you're using that you're getting this background noise, try a different app or come straight to the podcast. There's SoundCloud, there's different types of versions and audio readers that you can use. And if it's continuing on those, send another note into us and say, I've tried this one, I've tried this one. But if it does yeah, let us correct know. itself... We'd love to help you. Because there's know. a couple of other things. You can go to the YouTube, um, our yep. YouTube channel, Ben. You can listen to it there. You can listen to it on our website. So there's a few ways yeah. that we can help you get around that, but we would hate to miss you as yeah. part of the, the Property Couch community. A couple of things, um, we just might switch over to the web page here. Um, I have done a full Money Saving Hacks video series and I'd love to invite you to come and be a part of that. And the fact of the up to 55 days interest free, I've gone through an actual example. Oh, good work. Sorry, I, I, I've just stolen your thunder, haven't I? No, mate, we're a team. So the first <laughs> the first video there, so what, what I've done is, like, I don't pay credit card interest at all. No. It just doesn't happen. I do what Ben just said. I arrange for the bank to auto-sweep that. So what we do is in the first video, we go through what the mechanics of that are yep. and run through it so we can get that for you. Then in the second video... Um, we have this term that we've coined um, around stopping people unconsciously overspending, mm. and we think a, people, a, a lot of people actually do that. Yep, they do. So in the second video, I show you um, a very simple hack on how you can make sure you don't unconsciously overspend. And Ben, for the avoidance of doubt, if you are a uni student, mm-hmm. casual wages, yep. you are on salary, you are a CEO, you earn a million, you earn 100, you earn 50, it doesn't matter. It is exactly the same. We'll show you how to do that. And then the third video is how to put your finances on autopilot. Um, so it brings that all together. So really good one, Kate. We go to th- into some detail. So folks, if you want to go to thepropertycouch.com.au forward slash money hacks, or as you can see up on the screen there, it's also the propertyinvestorworkshop.com uh, forward slash money hacks. You can Brilliant. get that video series. We'd love to do that for you. So good one, Kate. Thank, Thank you very you, much. Thank you, Kate, for that question. Thank you, Iris. We'll flick back. But um, this one's from Daniel. Hi, guys. Love the podcast. You talk a lot about the long game, which I agree with. Hoping to get your thoughts on a property purchase prices 7 to 10 years from now, or in fact, 15 to 20 years from now. <laughs> if I think about the catalyst in the past, it has been increased wages, mm-hmm. dual income families, yep. and greater population. Yep. Also, relatively slow supply. Mm. Other than population, everything else is largely slowing, and with the rise of high-rise living, I think supply won't be uh, as much of an issue. Thanks, Daniel. This is one of my favourite questions, Brian. I I know I love everyone's question, but I have been talking about this right from the very early episodes, Yes, where um, when you've been doing this as long as we have, 20-plus years, you get a sense of long-term versus short-term mechanics in a market. So you're absolutely right. We've moved from single household incomes to double household incomes. Um, now we've got two professional household incomes. So the rising tide in low interest rates, the, li- the rising tide of incomes, lower interest rates, greater borrowing power, lifting the value of all properties. Is that sustainable? In my view, no, it's not. Mm. Okay, so asset selection and area selection becomes even more critical Mm -hmm. because if you are talking about system growth, which is what we're talking about when we get reported on the property market, we are just talking about all the property prices doing that. But in our view, and what we've seen in the field from literally tens of years of doing this, is that there are certain types of properties in certain localities whereby there is pressure from people living in that area and pressure from people coming into that area in terms of because of its high status, its high economic appeal, its convenience, all the things, the human interest and the human behavior stuff that we've often talked about. And that's underpinned by the scarcity of that land. So you would argue um, that not all property prices are gonna grow at the same system rate 
because it's that land value that underpins that. So you will get pockets of the market that will grow at different rates at different times and that's using demand and supply in terms of looking at that. But over the longer period of time, as people may be living in the outer suburbs and they may earn, you know, they may have success in business, they may get higher incomes, they're pushing on the scarcer assets closer in where that scarcity is and that's where that land appreciation occurs and that's why in our view they get a consistent long-term outperformance return because their wages are growing their borrowing power is exceeding the rest of the market and the scarcity of those older assets are the character and charm you know the more that the old ones get knocked down the fewer there are so you get that intrinsic value in the asset as well that's where the owner occupier appeal comes into it i think the important thing that, uh, that daniel and ben said right at the very beginning is the days of opening up your newspaper and going ah that's the one yeah. i'll buy because it'll go up in value that those days are over i might obviously if you could just flick back to a web page please i won't touch the screen so i just want to quickly <laughs> show you and see if we can uh Thank you, Ivis. If we can go up to, this is a map of Melbourne. So just to maybe highlight some of the stuff that Ben was just talking about there. If you if you have a, a look at what the driver is in Melbourne, it's largely proximity to the Melbourne CBD. So what you want to do is find, uh, if someone was to get a pay rise, mm. their, their default would be, how close can I get to the lifestyle drivers mm -hmm. And so traditionally in Melbourne, they've come down to this leafy east here, which is effectively, you know, the Fertile Crescent, which you go Richmond, Hawthorne, Q, paintbrush stroke right through the bay, and that's where typically yep. people want to spend a lot of money. Now, what we did um, as a business is we saw an opportunity because if you have a look at the, the stats of late where Melbourne has come off, um, that's largely been down in this pocket here where they were a little overcooked in terms of their prices yep. and they've come yep. back. Yep. But if you come over here, you'll see this inner west and the inner north and to a certain extent the inner northeast. There was opportunities where they haven't suffered as much of a price decline. In mm -hmm. fact, in some cases, if you bought the right properties, they've actually still gone up in value despite at the headline level, Melbourne has actually gone down in value. Mm -hmm. So that's that's important, Ben, isn't it? That, that uh, as you said, if someone's in control of their income, they will continue to go to the driver. For some people down here, it's proximity to the water. Some people over here, it's proximity to getting into the Melbourne CBD. Whatever it is, the parks, the mm. trams, the, well, not the trams, more the, the, the train stations. But that is where asset selection comes into it. Yeah, I mean, I, I love this graph, or this, this image there, Bryce, of Google Earth, because what we can also understand pretty simply, right, is that the further we drive out, what, what's what's the value of residential land, Bryce? The further you drive out, what, is it, what happens to it? It gets goes, cheaper. Goes down value. It's cheaper, it's isn't it? A bit more in supply. Because more in supply, and it's not underpinned by the infrastructure and all the demand drivers that are in closer in. So you will never see a situation where if I'm driving 30 or 40 kilometres from a city, that that per square metre of land will be more expensive than the inner city area. So you were mentioning the leafy east in terms of Melbourne. That's had the biggest correction because what normally happens is, you know, they normally have the biggest growth story and they're also the, 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 the bigger volatility. Now, we're moving into Sydney, same example applies. So what you want to see in terms of price movement and ripple effect, because we know the ripple effect is real, is where we're priced out and that demand of people move to that next level of affordability for themselves well if you're not getting that price growth in the closer in you simply won't those people will just move closer in so there's always demand on the center areas and, and we were talking about this just recently around what's happening in Perth the early signs for Perth are that the more affluent markets as the economy and business confidence starts to grow are doing their thing they're, they're coming off the bottom first and that will have a ripple effect in terms of the other um, marketplaces over the long term so short term you can pick the eyes out of it for one or two or three years you can find opportunities when you think value is cheap and then it finds a, a base but the long-term sustainable growth of any location is usually going to come from the inner area and move out. That's what we've seen over the last 40 or 50 years. Because, uh, Daniel, as you say, the further we move out to, towards sort of more mortgage belt territory, people, uh, despite the desire 
to pay more. Mm. They don't have the capacity to pay more. Whereas if you come a bit further in here, uh, the knowledge worker is someone who, you know, think got a dividend payment, got a bonus, uh, got a business profit, got some form of thing over and above yep. CPI and general wages growth means that they can then go to the bank and borrow more, which means that they can pay more, which is where that growth is going to live. So it's an important, it's a, Ben said it at the top, it's a fundamental question that's really, really important um, that we, um, we we find out. So if you're, if you're liking this, folks, um, just give us a comment in the box or just hit likes or thumbs up. We'd love to... Uh, 15 minutes already, bros. Yeah. Time flies when you're having fun. Yeah, exactly. So... Um, uh, We've done something different this time around, haven't we, Bryce? We have. In terms of our live Facebook. We have. We've had a little go had with a little, go. little bit of interaction with the screen. Let us know what you think. Because <laughs> property, uh, you know, we were talking about it before we hit record. Property's yep. visual. Yep. You, need to, you need to see some of this uh, in, in place. So, folks, uh, it's, uh, thanks, Kate, for letting us know, um, uh, for highlighting on behalf of everyone. It's up to 55. Up to 55 <laughs> days interest free. And a reminder, there's a series that you can check on. There'll be a link um, in the, the comments now. And secondly, uh, rising tide isn't going to lift all ships anymore. You have to be specific around asset selection. And uh, if you want to check out uh, what it takes for good asset selection, uh, every Thursday at 3 o'clock, Ben, we, uh, we get together, we yep. get on the couch, we talk about all things, and we have covered that extensively in our first 20 episodes, Ben. So what we're going to do is we're going to put a link uh, to the binge guide. Ooh. If someone wants to catch up to that really quickly, we can put that in the, uh, the comments. Check that out. But if you want to check us out every Thursday at 3 o'clock on thepropertycouch.com.au.